Hey guys, have you ever wanted to make a comic, but you've always found making backgrounds really difficult? Well, don't worry. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an environment inside Blender and stylize it using Photoshop to make it look like a drawing. Then you can simply move your camera around the scene and voila, you have a near infinite number of possible shots for your panel backgrounds. So if you're looking to make creating comics just a bit easier, sit back and I'll show you how to do just that. All right, so now that we're in Blender, we can actually begin setting up the environment. So we're gonna take default cube here. We're gonna move them up. Let's just make them a tad bit bigger. Now we're gonna go into edit mode using tab and we're gonna hit three. Make sure uh, you're on select planes and we're just gonna delete this front face because we do not need it. Now the important part, just to make the whole process a little easier, we're gonna select these three, which are gonna be our walls. We're gonna press P and then selection. And basically what that does is that will create a completely different object for our walls so everything's separate and we can select everything we'll do the same thing for the floor and ceiling and then just name them accordingly so you can keep track of everything all right and now that we've done that um we just want to squash the room down a bit no room is that tall and it's going to look a little awkward so we're going to squash our room down bring it down to the floor just like that and we have our room now so all that's left to do is to get a scale of reference. I'm gonna use the same humanoid base mesh that I always use. The link to the download will be in the description, of course. And the reason this guy is so important is because he makes sure that all the objects are the right size. Last time I did this, I did not use a scale of reference and my ceiling was way too tall. So we're gonna use this guy just to make sure everything is the right size. So when appending this, cause I've gotten several questions about appending this guy, cause um, supposedly he is very uncooperative. This is what the file should look like in your file once you've downloaded it. So you just wanna double click on adjustable humanoid base mesh once you're in the append menu. And then you're gonna hit the blend file. I go to object and then I just hit cube and I append. And now we have this guy in our scene and you can scale him up and do whatever you'd like to do. If you wanna delete the armature, all that stuff, you don't need it, completely useless. Now we can scale up to however big we want. So yeah, once you have your little fella and your box all set up, it's time to create. To decorate my scene, I'm gonna be using a combination of my own primitive modeling skills and assets from the Blender Kit add-on, just to save some further time because on this channel, we are all about efficiency. So to begin, I'm gonna use my loop tool to divide up the walls, as well as the inset faces tool to create some windows. Once they're the right size, I'll delete the faces and we get windows. After some rescaling, I'll take the outline of the windows and bring it back to make them 3D. Then we'll extrude this area at the top and the bottom to create some molding or trim. Then I hop into rendered view and begin altering the world color. I add a sun light to shine through our window and then go to append a Hosec sky node from a previous project to save some time. These nodes are great since they act as like a real life sky and in combination with the sunlight, you can create some really quick but effective lighting setups. Now I'm going to begin separating the trims of the room so I can make them different materials from the main walls. For the floor, I wanted some nice wood paneling. I found this one in Blender Kit and changed the texture node to coordinate so I could rescale the texture. That way it wouldn't look all stretched out. I adjust my lighting a bit more and then begin bringing in props from the Blender Kit add-on. Definitely one of my favorite add-ons. They have thousands of high quality assets that you can access all within the program, which allows you to make really easy and realistic scenes. This is definitely one of my most favorite parts of this whole process. Decorating the room is just a lot of fun. So make sure you get like a nice good variety of objects to put throughout your scene. Once all my props and decorations were placed, I put in another light source, which really helped break up the image and add a lot more visual interest to the scene. And remember to never be afraid of changing up your lighting. I often do a few different lighting setups before I find one that really stands out to me. 
Now we're gonna open up our render in Photoshop. This step is incredibly simple. And if you don't have Photoshop, I'm sure you can mimic this step in another way, either with a different program or maybe freestyle line inside Blender. But for time and because it's available to me, I'll be using Photoshop. So all we have to do is once you have it open, go up here to filter, hit filter gallery. And once your filter gallery opens up, I already have mine um, on the filter. You're gonna to wanna to go and find posterize under artistic. This gives us this really cool but rough outline effect. You can play around with your settings to see which best fits your scene, but for mine, I think this looks good. Then we'll just hit okay and export this as a PNG and we're good to move on to the next step. Now that I'm done in Photoshop, I hop into my drawing program Autodesk Sketchbook to do some rough drawing over top of our image. You can also feel free to just stay in Photoshop for this step or use whichever drawing program you like. Here I'm going to begin adding some hand-drawn line work over top of what the filter gave us, because while it forms a strong base, it needs a rougher, more human touch. Adding more areas of black or messy crooked lines really help with this. I then come to my windows. I didn't feel enough light was pouring in, so first I brighten up the sky in the background, and then I use the polygon select tool to cut out an area to put my rays of sunlight to shine through the room. I fill this area in using an airbrush tool on a soft glow layer, which makes a really good effect for sunlight. I then do the same for the lamp, but more faint, as well as adding some more additional line work. Next, I'll add some dust particles to the sunlight. It's a small detail, but it adds a lot of ambience to the picture. Then I begin adding more black areas. I really like the black spots that the filter gives us, but it just doesn't push it quite enough for me, and some areas feel like they're missing it. So I just go in and add it where it's needed. After this, we need to clean up this noise. The filter creates a great line work base, but in that process, it gives objects that had textures in the render these weird, noisy black spots which make it look a lot more filtery, which is not something that we want. So in places where it's very evident, I just go in and paint over top of it. You can do this roughly, don't try and get all of it. Leaving a bit of the texture can actually give a cool stylistic effect. We just wanna get rid of most of it so it doesn't look like we used a filter. Then I come back to the windows and brighten up their borders. After doing that, I realized my walls were a bit bare, so I used the polygon select tool to help make some hanging pictures for the office. This is very simple, but adds a lot in the end. I give them some nice black frames and decide the large one in the middle should serve as a bulletin board. That way my detective can stereotypically connect photos with red yarn. Then, I also add some rougher details to the other hanging frames, just to give the illusion that there's something. When I'm done this, I go in and add some more grunge and dirt to the room, as well as a rim light along my objects. This is something I always add to my drawings. It makes the lighting in this scene feel a lot more real, but also helps images like this look more drawing-like. And remember, the more small, stylistic touches like this that you add, the better your final result will look. So this is my finished scene. I absolutely love the results of this technique. And while it does require some drawing knowledge, I definitely encourage you to try it because mixing 3D and 2D is not only fun, but can save loads of time. And if you're independently making something like a comic, then time savers like this are a must have. So hopefully this tutorial can help you in your artistic endeavors or just give you a fun little project to try out. If you have any other video or tutorial suggestions, please leave your ideas in the comments. I would love to read them and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.